In just over a minute, we're off on the history trail, looking at the growth of London and how it changed the face of 18th century England. London in 1730, still quite a small city surrounded by fields. And in the centre, newly built after the Great Fire, was the huge dome of St Paul's Cathedral. Seventy years later, you would have to walk much further to be out in the fields. London was growing fast. There were so many people coming to London from the country looking for work that it had grown twice as big by the year 1800. London was the largest city in Europe. busiest crossroads. For hundreds of years, people coming to London from the west have arrived here. We know what it looked like 200 years ago. Not quite so much traffic, but still a busy road. And there was an inn here, a place where travellers could rest after their long journey. It was called the Hercules Pillars. Oh, that's good, is it? Yeah. Oh, bad, it's a weapon down, you know. There we are. That's for you. Ah, well, it's nice, huh? Well, how old is this, Nipper, eh? You wait till he gets a bit of a lot of trouble. Just watch your mouth for the way. Yeah. You look hungry. Thanks. What's your name? Mary Jones. Mm -hmm. And little Pam. Hello. It's me, Jonathan. Were you said to come again today? So I'm here. You said you had work. Me? I'm overworked. What about you? <laughs> no, of course I ain't. That's why I'm asking you. Where's your husband then? First scanned. Into the Navy. They came looking for work. Work? Here? Respect a girl like you. No work round here. Except what I do. What I do. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. I think I best be going. Well, cutting ears an art, you know. Has you the skill? Can you shave a man? Well, I can shave myself. Well, I do need help. Right. Pay sixpence, one day's trial, I cut you shave. Sixpence? All right, sevenpence, but that's all. Not everyone coming to London could find a job as easily as Jonathan. For them, London was a harsh place to be unemployed. All right, baby. We're going home. 
Find work tomorrow, you and me. It's a long walk, though, so no crying. Oh, we came up to London town, my baby child and me. Yes, we came up on a Sunday morn, the wondrous sights to see. For London, she's a fine old town, and London Bridge is fair. And the old town and the new town and the three-legged mare. A Sunday, a Monday, a wondrous sight to see. Up Auburn Hill for a three-legged mare, my baby child and me. And the bells will ring and the people will sing, a wondrous sight to see. Yes, the bells will ring and the people will sing, and we shall all merry be. The three-legged mare. Can you guess what that was? It wasn't a horse, but it was a very familiar sight in London then, and not a pleasant one. Monmouth Street, Mercer Street, Shelton Street, Earl Street. Seven dolls is on a clock. Where'd you live then? Up there, second floor back. Oh, is that good lodgings? Hey, good lodgings? There's only three rooms in the house better than mine. Front, second floor, and the first floor front rooms. <laughs> Save us. Sit down, Jonathan. So, uh, how much you pay for this, then? Two and six a week. Oh. Can't afford that. Nor could I when I first moved up to London. Well, where's these lodgings I'm supposed to be having then? Where I used to sleep once upon a time, in the back cellar with the Irish labourers. Straw mats and tuppence a week. I know there's one spare. <laughs> Here, cheer up. It's better than sleeping on the streets, isn't it? <laughs> and you've already got your first tuppence. There were many run-down lodging houses in London then, in dirty, narrow streets. You only have to look at a street map of that time to guess what those streets must have looked like. There's Dead Man's Place, Dirty Lane, Foul Lane, Melancholy Walk, not very nice at all. Places like these gave London its nickname, the Great Wen. A wen is like a wart, and some people thought that London was like a wart on the face of the nation. Many people on the streets went hungry and cold. Some died from disease, from drink, or even from a house collapsing into the street. And there was always the threat of the gallows for those that broke the law. For London, she's a fine old town, and London Bridge is fair, and the old town and the new town and the three-legged man. Well, what do you want? I came looking for work. Work? What, here in Spitalfields? <laughs> they said I might find work in your shop. Well, there's no work for you in my shop. Why don't you try and become a seamstress, eh? Can you sew? Of course I can. Well, fine ladies and gentlemen are always wanting new clothes, but they don't want to stitch them themselves, so... <laughs> well, off you go. So it's work you want, is it? I think you come here to steal. No, I was just looking. You came here to steal. That's valuable silk, that is. No, I put it back. Only when I saw you. If I hadn't been here, you'd have made off with that cloth. No, listen. No. I've caught you now. You just stay where you are. But it's not true. I put it back. If you meant to buy it, where's your money, eh? Where's your money? 
Well, I'm off to get the law. I put it back. Watchman! I put it back. Mary Jones. Uh, my husband was taken for a sailor by the press gang. He's dead. I have a baby. No money. No work. I picked up the cloth. I was so anxious. I hardly knew what I did. I put it back. Mary Jones, the sentence of this court upon you is that you shall be taken to Newgate Prison and thence to a place of execution, and that you be hanged by the neck. No! No! <laughs> Punishment for crime was much harsher then than now. Mary Jones was a real person, and all these things really did happen to her. There were a lot of thieves in London, and judges used to make examples of them by sentencing them to death but they weren't all hanged. If you knew a gentleman or worked for a rich man, they might get you let off. Mary Jones didn't know anyone like that, so there was no one to plead for her. She was doubly unlucky because she hadn't really committed a crime at all. In the condemned cell, she read the names of others who had been there and saw the pictures they had carved in the wooden walls. Oh, I do not live in Spitalfields, and seven dials don't know me. Our lodgings are a darker place, my baby child and me. And Sunday night was a long dark night, and Monday morn came slow. But London town is a wondrous town with wondrous sights to show. A Sunday, a Monday, a wondrous sight to see. A Poven Hill for a three-legged mare, my baby child and me. And the bells will ring and the people will sing, a wondrous sight to see. Yes, the bells will ring and the people will sing, and we shall all merry be. Right, let's see what pickings we got today. Three watches, gold, two silver, five Silk handkerchiefs. Three snuff boxes. It's not a bad day's work, eh? Work, he says, but they're all stolen. Yeah, should fetch more than seven pence. More like seven guineas, eh, Tom? Very least. Very least. Here. Go on. Now you've touched it. Now you're as guilty as me, boy. So you don't think of snitching on me. No. <laughs> Honour. Right, now listen. Mm -hmm. Round here, seven dials, we do as we please. The only crime in London is to get caught. Oh, don't ever do that. And you can be honest in this town and still swing for it. It's one such tomorrow. A girl with a young'un. And Sunday night was a long dark night and Monday morn came slow. But London town is a wondrous town with wondrous sights to show. Sunday was the condemned prisoner's last day alive. People used to visit the jail to look at them the day before they died. A priest would take a last confession, which would be sold on the streets on the day of the hanging. On Monday, Mary Jones will be taken from the prison through the streets of London up Holborn Hill to Tyburn. Crowds will line the streets and halfway there, at St Giles's, she will be offered a last drink at a tavern. And at Tyburn she will discover what the three-legged mare is. It was also called Tyburn Tree. I shall not stop in a coffee shop and the bookshops I'll pass by. And I shall not seek a lawyer's aid in the lane of chancery. But I shall stop at the old St Giles, at the tavern there I'll be For a sip of ale and a 
tender kiss, my baby child and me. A Sunday, a Monday, a wondrous sight to see. A poem and hill for a three-legged mare, my baby child and me. And I'll go off with the fall of a leaf, a woeful sight to see. Yes, I'll go off with the fall of a leaf on the deadly never-green tree. Know her, do you? Never seen her before in my life. Oh. Wonder what she done. Don't make no difference. She's swinging for it now. All that happened over 200 years ago, and it happened here, Marble Arch. Looking at it now, you wouldn't believe that this place was once Tyburn Tree, a place where they hanged people. Not unless you were looking very hard. You see, there aren't many signs to tell you. Just this street sign, Tyburn Way, and this stone, just right in the middle of a traffic island. But there are still many parts of London that Jonathan and Mary Jones would recognize. And to help us recognize some of them, we're going to meet Roy Porter, a man who knows a great deal about London's history. I'm taking you into the George Inn. It's just a stone's throw from London Bridge, but it's one of the great clues to George in London. Right. Just come round here. Right. Okay. Did it look like this in the 18th century? Yes, it probably looked very much like this, but, but back in the 18th century, a pub was very different from what a pub is nowadays. Mm. For example, it was open all the day, and men, women and children, everybody would have come in, because it wasn't just a place for drinking, everything went on here. It's a place where a lot of business was done. People read their newspapers, uh, barbers would shave their, their clients, doctors would come and prescribe for their patients. It was a sort of tremendous, lively place, because people back in the olden days didn't like staying at home so much as they do nowadays. The place of entertainment, the place of life, the pub, the church, the coffee house. They love to congregate there and have a good time. I know where we are. This is Waterloo Bridge. That's right. We're walking across from the South Bank to the North Bank. Because the North is where the main part of London always was. Or I say the main part of London. What I really mean is, is the two cities of London. Because there are always two cities. There was the City of London, which is over there. And that was the centre for industry, commerce, trade, wealth, banks. And then over there, there's the city of Westminster, where the court was, where Parliament sat, and where fashionable people wanted to live. Well, here we are, Lorraine, in the middle of London, between Leicester Square and Covent Garden. This is what's called Seven Dials. There used to be seven sundials here, where these streets meet. You can still see lots of clues here to what London was like in the 18th century. Take these shop fronts, for example. They haven't changed much since they were first built. And above them, you can see the rooms in which the common people used to lodge. In a room, a whole family would have lived, or possibly four or five unmarried workmen. Also, there was nowhere around here where they could wash. There is no bathroom here. And there was probably a pump out in the back garden, and that's where people got their water from. This part of London is called Spitalfields. It's in the East End. The East End is the part of London where the poor people worked and lived. The West End is where the richer people used to live. You can see what sort of people worked here from the street signs and from the pub signs. Oh. For example, Weaver's Street and Fashion Street and the Crown and Shuttle and the Weaver's Arms. This is the kind of shop from which Mary Jones stole the cloth. It's very elegant, isn't it? Yes, it, it's, it's a very posh sort of shop. You can tell it's posh by the, the size of the door, by the steps leading up to the door, and by the, the lovely bow windows, which um, let as much light in as possible. And the shopkeeper wanted to attract the, the highest class of customers, and so he wanted to make the display of his goods as good as he possibly could. Me. Oh, this is Coram's Fields. This is where the Foundling Hospital used to be. That was a place, a home, where orphans and unwanted babies were brought. It was where Mary Jones's baby was brought. The children who lived here were quite well looked after and educated. Many of the boys went off to sea and became sailors. 
Why was it called Coram's Field? Oh, it was named after the founder of the hospital, a man called Thomas Coram, who was an old sea dog himself and who was very fond of children. There you are, little pan. It's the best I can do for you. There. Another little orphan for London town. Mind you, think yourself lucky. It's not every little orphan that's brought here. I wonder what you'll be when you grow up. Oh, we came up to London town, my baby child and me. We came up on a Sunday morn, the wondrous sights to see. For London, she's a fine old town, and London Bridge is fair. And the old town, and the new town, and the three-legged mare. The Sunday.